welcome to Need I Say More? That totally awesome. The Totally Awesome Fishing Show. The greatest fishing show on YouTube, as you guys should well know. Now, I love fishing rivers. I love float fishing. I love catching anything, as you probably know. You realise that with about a gazillion videos we're putting up on all the different species. We're going to go down the Upper Hampshire Raven. I'm going to try and show you how to float fish properly. A lot of younger guys are losing this art of float fishing. They just go bzzz out of the ledger, put it in the buzzers. Osh, osh, osh. No. Is that fishing? Well, it's catching, but it's not really fishing, is it? On a river, a whole different ball game. You have to manipulate your tackle with the float. Did I say that? Manipulate your tackle with a float? You have to steer your float through the river at the right speed, the right depth, feed it at the right time. It's not that easy, actually. It's not that easy. I'm going to take Mike, my son, down, and our film editor, try and catch him some grayling. See what else we got down there. Conditions aren't particularly good, but we're going to go anyway because that's what we are. Totally awesome fishing. We just go fishing and we catch what we catch. It's not all set up like, you know, you hear, hear other people, oh, it's all set up, private lakes, all this business. No, we're just going to go fishing, see what we can do. Let's go. I'm hoping you guys actually get to learn a lot about this float fishing. It's becoming a forgotten art and float fishing in the river is very, very satisfying when you get it right. Let's hit the tarmac, guys. We're here on the banks of the Hampshire Raven on the upper stretches and it is pushy. Everything always seems to be against us for the last few films. Are the Totally Awesome crew going to succeed? I hope so. I hope we get to show you a grayling. Hopefully Mike's going to get his first grayling. We're going to run through the tackle. I'm going to get my breath back. Whew. I mean the best fishing spots usually are the farther ones that you have to walk. That's why I've made up this. Carry all the camera equipment and we can lug all the six cameras, nine tripods, 42 batteries and nine chips that we use when we're filming to bring you guys something on YouTube. Ah, get my breath back. Let's take a look at the floats. It's less strenuous. All right, guys, I'm going to show you my beautiful float box. It's pristine. It's like a matchman's. It hasn't been open for some time. Yes, it's a bit of a disgusting mess. Obviously, at some stage, it's had all those foam liners, so you can pinch all your floats in nice and neat and stack them all. But mine are just in there, rolling around, chipping the paint off. And then when I finish, you can see, I just bite it off quick, because I generally fish late, drop it all in there, and I do this. Bye. It's gone to the next trip. But we're going to be using, hopefully, stick floats and avens. Now, this is what I call a balsa-bodied aven. Now, it takes quite a lot of shot. Obviously, you can pivot down to the red, or you can pivot down to the white piece there depending on the current flow, and a small valve rubber there pinches the line, comes through the float, and it comes out that little ring at the end there. So really, you know, pretty basic float. Because it's pushing so much, I think we'll probably get most of our fish, if we do get them, are gonna be on the, you know, body Davens. That's that one. These others are a multitude of different stick floats that you can get. You can get really, really small ones that don't take very much shot like these. Personally, I don't think it matters on a river whether this is clear, black, clear, white, yellow, whatever, I don't think it matters at all, to be honest, because it's moving through a river. Maybe on a still water, they could see colours, and that might be a bit of a, a garish colour. Or you can get, obviously, camouflage green and brown. That looks good, but that one's really on a slow-moving, smooth surface river, because you can see the float top is just pipped down to, like, nothing there. Absolutely nothing. That is no good for me with these specs. I won't even see the float, never mind the tip. So... Probably with the wire, what we're going to do is these wire stem stick floats. They just got like quarter of an inch there. That one says it's a pro flow, it takes six number four shot, which means nothing to me. I just keep piling shot on until it cocks right. But the difference between these, I'll just tell you these two, is when you're when you're running through with a float with a stick float and you're pulling back, if you're trying to hold back, every time you do this, it's moving at the other end, whereas the wire stem being longer gives you sort of more stability running through the, the surface film and you've got that right on the surface film there and the rest of the river here. Of course you can pick up a bigger bit of that. There's more flow here today, definitely it's really, really pushing. It's not coloured but it's pushing. 
you'll get more water resistance up against this float, which is just a standard stick float. It's got a fat, wider body there, so the current can push against that, and that will help to you know get it through the swim. And of course, another little tip you look for in floats, if you're trotting through an area of glare, it's going to be hard seeing these floats, so you can use a black tip one, and that black tip against a white glare is really good on a smooth flowing section for species like roach. So a variety of stick floats there. We'll start with the Avons. We're going to get some bait in and I'm going to try some mash bread just to get them going first. Now people say mash bread for grayling? Now I'll tell you what the tip is. The grayling are laying in the current, they have no problem with fast water like this. But I've just seen something rise over there then, it's distracting me totally. The grayling lay in the water, the first bit of bait comes past them What's that, what's that, what's that? So I don't want to waste all my best maggots going past the fish. I want to get them feeding. So we're going to try them on bread first so they get used to taking a few bits and then sort of wean them off of the bread and the bran mix and then get them onto the maggots. And then I've got a feeling it would be away. And I'll tell you what else is in this stretch, guys. Don't tell anybody. You know what it is. It's big, big dace. I'm seriously big dace, I'm talking. Maybe British record dace. You know, I've had them over a pound. Mike can catch all the grayling he wants. I just want the dace. Let's get cracking with the bait. Right guys, my first time trotting. Target species grayling today. Um, done about six, it's about my sixth trot down. Just getting used to cocking the float. Just getting used to the technique, casting. It's, uh, it's all new to me this. And I've got my first fish on here. It's putting quite strong, but I think it's actually a brown trout. Looks it, yeah. It looks so like we'll, a brownie. We'll try and get this one back as quick as possible. But it puts up a good fight. That looks like quite, quite a decent sized brownie. Get the net. We actually have the net with us this time. Come on, get in. Easy. Good on, yeah, not bad. About fourth or fifth trot down. Yeah. What a cracking six. fish. It might not be a grayling, but just it's a nice one. Look at that one. And there's our maggots just in the scissors. Let's get it out. Quick picture, get it back. Right, guys, we've unhooked him. Gonna get it back as quick as possible. Not the target species we wanted, but good scrap. Good scrap, and we've got a good few hours to get that grainy. Off he goes. Straight away. Well, guys, I couldn't resist it after seeing Mike with that first fish. <laughs> so he's had a few runs through, bumped a couple off, because with grailing as well, you can lose them, and we've got a double whammy. I don't know whether one of us has got a grain and we've got two fish on at the same time. That's what you call totally awesome fishing. See, Mike's got another brownie. Yeah. We'll get there eventually. And luckily, folks, Mike's bigger. There we go guys, still not the target species, but we're getting the bites, that's the main thing. Let's get him back quickly. I'll tell you what guys, this is a nice brown trout. Let's see if we can get him in and show you one and then, hopefully, the grayling are going to come off. If these are finding the feed, I'm sure the grayling are going to find it. Oh, let's check this one out for you. Look at that one. That is a chunky brown trout. What a beautiful fish and a perfect tail to it. I guess that fish is maybe two pounds, something like that. What a beauty. Unhooked, back. Grayling fishing. Go on. I've got, yes, another spotted grayling, but this one is a big one. Let me bring him up for you. 
What a beautiful mark fish that is. Look at that, a beauty. It's actually laying still for me. And that is gold belly brown trout. Getting towards three pounds, wonderful fish. This one up here is called the adipose fin, which shows you all game fish. And we're hopefully gonna get you that grayling. Well, Mike is anyway. Let's get this one back. Beautiful fish. There we go, my beauty. That is a lovely fish. Look at that. Look at the pretty markings on it, Jim. That is a nice fish. Absolutely pristine. And there he goes. Straight back in the river. Let's get those baggots out. I haven't brought enough with me. Big grading, guys. Big grading. Now you can lose them, they do bump off because they've got an underswung mouth. But this is a nice grading. I love it when you see the float cut through the water close in like that. Oh, he's a chunk. <laughs> Please don't come off. This is a beauty. This is a beauty, guys. That's what you call a nice grayling. Look at that beautiful fin there. I guess this one's around pound and a half ish, but let me show you that. There. That's what we go grayling fishing for. Absolutely huge sail they've got. And just look at that mouth. If you can see that there with a camera, it's like underslung and it's very, very bony there. So you can actually bump quite a few off. Very, very pleased with that. Now we've got to get Mike one. Guys, I've got a monster on here. It ain't no way it's a grayling. And I'm not even sure what it is. It's B-I-G though. It's got my match rod absolutely maxed out and he's, he's off downstream. It sort of looked like a salmon to be honest. It's definitely not a brown trout. Could be a six pound dace, I suppose. He's digging and digging. Let's see if we can get him up there. I, I hate losing fish you can't see, I expect all anglers. If you can see it, it's still bad when you lose it, isn't it? But you just want to see what is it? I mean, you can see the float down there, absolutely. He's holding that float in the current, just planing in the current. I love that sight, especially if you're barbell fishing. I mean, that's what float fishing really is all about. Oh, it's a giant rainbow. It's a big, big rainbow trout. Oh my God, I shouldn't be catching this on a match rod. Come on, I can't even get it up from the float. Oh, oh dear ladies, oh dear. Why have we got such a tiny hook on? Oh, I might have to follow this one a bit, I think. Now, should you get a big fish, what you want to do, rather than try and tear its head off against a strong current, and this is strong, I'm going to try and get downstream of it, and I might get a shot of netting this. If I turn it suddenly downstream, it's got the current. I'm not pulling that rod against the current. Oh, it's a big rainbow trout. Oh, I don't want to lose this one. Oh, oh, oh. Right, I'm going to keep moving downstream now, and see if I can get below it. Unfortunately, he's read the script. <laughs> he's doing, he's coming back down with me. Oh, that's a beauty. What a fish. That is the downside of these mattresses. He's going to pull me in. Oh, oh, it's about eight pounds. Oh my God. What a fish, let's get it back quick. Oh, what a fish, what a fish. Gotta move quick, it's a beautiful, beautiful bar of silver this one. I'm just gonna keep him quiet for a second. I don't want him covered in mud, want you guys to see the best of this one. What about that guys? That is a totally awesome rainbow trout in a river on a, well, I'm gonna say stick float, that's on the Avon, but what a beauty. Magnificent condition, grayling, Browns, 
Let's get him back in the water. What a beauty. There's something about trotting on a river that's extremely satisfying. Once you get into the swing of it, you can rarely stop. It takes only a few fish in the landing net to make anglers realise what great sport is on offer. And it's even more satisfying to watch them swim off. Mike soon got into the swing of running the float down with the pace of the current and was into fish after fish. You have no time to sit down. The more work you put in, the more action you should get. And on a light match run, you really do have yourself a challenge. Here we go guys. Been here about an hour, hour, just over an hour. Getting used to the trotting now and I've got my first grading. Which to be honest right now, I just want to get into the net. Come on you beauty. Slack off a bit, you might ping. That's it, got him, got him, got him. Come on. Pull a yard of line off. I know. There we go. Get in, yes. There we go, guys. A nice fish too. Trotting maggots, bit of bread, and my first grayling. Awesome, totally awesome. On the float, there's our float. Body Dave and now we're going to move upstream in a minute. Let's get that one unhooked, grab a still off it and check out one of these other swims. Lovely fish. Look at that fin. He wants to go back. My first ever graining. I'm over the moon. But I want to get some more now. I'm addicted. There we go, look at that. Let's recover him. And they do take a bit of time to recover these things. Yeah. Be worth mentioning that grading do not keep well out of the water. There we go, his gills are moving. Yeah, see him moving there. Just let him recover. Once the grayling started feeding, Mike was away, with bites and fish almost every drop down. No need for keep nets. Just catch one fish and get it straight back. Grayling are a pretty fish and good scrappers on light tackle but they fare much better in the water than out. The trout live in the same rivers as grayling and are often the first species to hit your bait. It's impossible to avoid them. Other baits for grayling are brandlings, sweet corn and bread. But you are always hard pushed to beat three white maggots on a size 12 hook. Well, that's got Mike's first grading out of the way, but I tell you what, this Upper Hampshire Raven is pristine quality river. And up here is the perfect classic swim. Just up there, about 50 yards, there's a beautiful tree that's fallen in the water, one of students in the floods, and all the rubbish from the winter's floods have congregated around that, and they're all matted up. And that's a classic place where they can actually get bits of food caught up in it. All species fish it, all. Pike underneath, dace, roach, chub, anything, barbel, they love this swim. Let's get up there, get the bait up, get the totally awesome camera equipment up there, and I'll tell you what, if I can't catch a fish up there, I'm eating this hat. Well, it's the colour of custard, I suppose, isn't it? Come on, don't hang about. Well, now this is the swim. This is, for those of you who ever watched that programme, Mr Crabtree Goes Fishing, or whatever they call it, this is the ultimate classic Mr. Crabtree scenario. We're right opposite the broken tree that's falling in the water. There's a big mat, a big raft of rubbish there. I'm going to put some bread in there, and we honestly haven't fished this yet. But I hope to get Mike hooked up first cast through if we get it set right with the bait. But don't throw your bait right on the swim. You've got to throw it up here to the left in the bend because on the inside of the bend is slower on the outside of the bend is faster so it's going to push it all the way in there and hopefully all the bits of bread and all the bits of maggots i'm going to throw in will trickle under that raft there pull the fish out the grayling's going to come i'm hoping i'm hoping the dates are going to come out and i'm going to run the float or mike's going to run the we're going to stick with the avens we're not going to put uh, stick floats so we can stay with the avens it's still quite a bit of pace and just you can see a bit of rubbish going through there just on the top past the edge of the raft 
that's where the float needs to go about there to about a foot or so inside all the way around the bend it shallows up across there then it goes weed it comes up like this not so good this is the bend this is the ultimate spot let's get some bait in i'm going to put the bread in first and then the old maggies just throw small golf ball size in and just let it break up and go down allow about 20 feet between throws so that that's gone down and it pours past their face all this bread and bran breaks up and it's pouring past the grayling and the dace their face and eventually they start snapping at a few pieces when they get confident we put some maggots in and then we're away you don't really say first cast that he's going to get a fish living dangerously isn't it I haven't even got polarizing glasses, but I can see underneath the water, that backside, there's what we call a hang. It's just, there must be an overhang underneath that bank. It must be pretty deep over there. I'd say there's going to be some big old fish laying under there as well. Right, that's enough bread and bran in there. To, they know there's a fish just rose down there. They know we're here. Let that go through. A few maggots on top. All this feeding on the little and often. I just feed on the basis of often. You also use a catapult as well. Now that's really pretty well fed, fed up there. I've got the rods rigged up. I'm just going to show you basically the way to trot properly. The totally awesome way to trot. Okay, we're both using 13 foot max rods. This one's called a super tip 13 foot. Wow, that sounds impressive. No, don't write in folks because I haven't got a clue what it is. It's just a nice, really fast action tip rod. And the other one's a 140 year old regular fiberglass one that I used. So, depth here's maybe about three feet. We've got our bodied Avon there, rubber at the top. BB here, another BB there, one there spaced out. Maggots here. I'm not going to run it through with maggots because I'll tell you what, I'm so confident. I really would get a fish first cast. I'd be very surprised if we don't. So I'm going to just tell you how to do it. Now, fixed ball reels. You can trot with a centre pin. It's not easy to learn. Much easier to learn with this. Try and space your shot out. Do not overhead cast. Try and swing your cast sideways if you can. Just out like that. Let it hit the surface. Now, what you want to do is, basically here, I've seen people, especially beginners, they're doing this with it. They're doing this and they strike by holding this line and then striking. Now you don't do that, you just one hand. This hand's free, if I'm right-handed. This hand is free there. You see it that way. And I'm just letting the float go down. It's running down. Slowly, I let some line off. Stop it. Just mend the line. I'll show you that in a second. Let the line off. Stop it. Let the line off. Stop it. All the time, I'm concentrating on the float so that it drags, but it doesn't drag too hard. Now there's two ways of letting this float go through. So when you get through to the end of your swim, close the veil arm, just bring it back in. Now, let's just do that one again so you know. No overhead casts. I hold my bait, hold it like this so I know everything's nice and straight. Either way you can swing it this way or you can swing it that way. Check if there's any branches overhead, trees overhead, and just swing it sideways and out like that. Then it's flat. I've already automatically, because I've been doing it for 50 years, got my finger on the spool, ready for a bite, even though there's no bait on it. It's sad, really, isn't it? But a couple of turns to get level with the float. You'll just get the tip tension on it. Then I open the bail arm. So come up there, and you can actually see the floats going down. I just let a bit of line off, just stop it with the bail arm. And I say, when you strike, don't strike upwards. It comes flying back in your face and tangles. When you get it down here, you're going to strike low and to the left away and pull the hook into the fish and all I'm going to do is just a flick of the wrist is bang that's all there is to it that's all there is to it you don't need to rip it out because you'll end up in the rushes or up a tree or somewhere so just a little pop just a little pop let it go down here's a bite bang close the bale away you go then you can also fight it if you don't want to use a drag anti reverse off you can get a big fish fight it on back wind and of course with back wind you can stop it with your finger you've still got the drag now let's just take another look at how to hold the float back because you can hold it back hard or you can let it run through at what we call pace. Right, here we go. 
I cannot stress the importance of letting the float run through at the right speed. Holding back too hard will make a wake on the float. Just keep releasing line from the reel so the float runs through with the minimum of disturbance. If it runs at the same speed as the food particles, it will look more natural to the fish. Okay, so what you do is you swing your float out. As soon as it hits the surface, you're in, you're in constant contact with the rod top. Everything sinks to the bottom. Now you want it running through nice and steady, just like that. And when you get to the end of the rod top, if you like, you let some line off the spool just there and you can just hold it so there's a slight wake. What you don't want to do is hold it back this hard because it's too hard. The bait's going to swing up in the water too high it'll be over the fish's head. So just let, I'm going to drop it there. You can see the difference. Just a very, very small wake as I let it go right down the swim. And that way, if it's slightly over depth, I'm holding it back. The bait is going down the river before the float. And then when I want to strike, let's assume it's going to go under now. Little wrist strike, pop. That's all it is. I'll do it again. It's just a flick of the wrist. Float's gone under, pop. Fish on. One more way I will show you. Occasionally, the fish will want it going through quickly. If the fish is what I call in heavy water, and this is fining down. This is it's pushing, but it's, it's not the best conditions, but it's pretty good, actually. But if it was going through too fast, I'd have to hold back too much. So this time I let it go through at a constant pace. I'm letting line go, 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 go all the time. And that way, it looks natural to the fish. So out we go again. Take the hook out of my finger. Out we go again. You just tighten up with the rod top. Now, there's the, there's the little wake you get. With, now that's a classic way of trotting. Just a little bit of pressure on the flow. You just let it go. To, or... I can stick the line to the surface, release everything. Now look how smooth it goes now. It looks like a bite with its weed. Now I'm just letting that go through on, under its own steam. Constant. Just open the bail. Occasionally stop it with your fingertip on the rim of the spool. Let it run, let it run, let it run. It's going through a nice constant speed. Then it goes under. Flick of the wrist. Pop. Fish on. Right, down to Mike. We're going to bait up now. I'm going to get... I've actually hired a helicopter to get the most amazing aerial shot that Totally Awesome I've ever done. We're not telling anybody how we do it. I'm hoping, if we put a bit more bait in, Mike's first cast down is gonna get a hook up. I hope. Right down to you move the floats, pulling the float downstream. Now go, now open. They're getting ready, but anyway, they're onwards. Yep. When trotting near an overhang, don't be afraid to use side strain to prevent that fish driving you into snags. Even with a match rod, you can apply good solid pressure to turn the fish. And don't be afraid to milk the drag by pulling it with your fingers. Get in there! Oh, Three. He's in. He's in. Oh, a That's one. a big fish. That's a big brown trout. Nice Holy cow! That is a big fish. That is a nice brownie. That's easily my best brown brown trout. Since but, the last one. But we need to. <laughs> that is uh, a big one. We need there. to get it back in the water. That is a biggie. Awesome. So what do you think? Looks about four pounds to us. All right, guys. Just going to release him up here. We've unhooked him. Try and get them back as quick as possible. Oh, in this we clear bit there. a nice bit there to get them out. Just lower them down slowly. There you go. Consider yourself a fisherman. Just how far do you want to take it? Subscribe to 
to this channel for more awesome videos. On again, guys. There's no way I could let Mike fish this swim. It's just, oh, it's a nice grayling again. I couldn't just let him fish his swim. I've got to have a few trots through there. It's just such a classic because it's got different speeds. On the inside of the bend is slow, on the outside of the bend is fast. Oh, come on, don't fall off. Listen, if you go fishing, don't be surprised if you do bump them off because it's just, I've changed different hooks, narrow ones, wide gapes. There's no real reason. They just bump off grading when they take. I think it's something to do with that underslung noise. Another nice fish. You can actually see their, their fin sticking up in the water, and that's what they do. They're playing in the current. I can turn him a bit. Yeah, you can see his fin coming up there. Beautiful, like a sailfish. See the drag up, come on. I'll just give you guys a tip, because I know a lot of youngsters watch our totally awesome fishing show. Don't, I'm going to risk losing this fish now, don't wind right down like this to the tip and then expect to get it in the net because there's not enough line and you have to pull all the way back and when you pull back it puts an acute angle in the rod top and it will probably snap your rod top or you lose the fish or both. So just back off and try and get almost the same length from your hand to the tip of the rod, the bend in the rod, so that when you ease it back like this you're not trying to pull the fish out the water. I'm even going to back, I'm still too short there, so I back wind, one, two, three, four, I can draw the fish over perfectly in the mark, and I'll just bring him up to the camera, it's going a bit crazy, another nice squirming grayling with a, oh boy they're strong, this is Finn, this is pretty little Finn, and let's get this one straight back. There we go. Yeah. Beautiful that fish. Just recover him a minute. Yeah. Oh boys. This is what I am talking about. This is what is worth coming to the Upper Avon for. What do you think? That is a big, big buck dace. Got his dorsal fin up for us as well. That is a nice fish. I bet he's half a pound or more, 10 ounces. What a fish. What a fish and what a day we're having. I don't know how this fish got past all the grading and the trout, but he did. And good luck to him. And he's a nice little chappy. And there are fish here to over a pound, because I've caught them. What? Oh. There we go. There's not many places you can get dace of that size. And there's not many times you can tread in the bloody maggot. Oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Just tread in the maggots. <laughs> I mean... Oh. I know it's a big day, so I know it's a big day, but look at the stay, I've got maggots in my shoes. Better get a close up of that one, won't you? Oh no, even better. Get a picture oh, of the other one that's going under the water. Gosh, this is where they've had flooding. And it's, and it's absolutely saturating the ground. But I tell you what, it's worth it. Because it's very rare to get dace that big nowadays. Mostly eaten by otters, cormorants and pike. So really pleased to get that fish. Guys, another big grayling. As I told you, it went trout mad to start with, and then the grayling moved in because that's exactly how I wanted to bait it. Had that dace, another nice grayling. We're piling them in now. Look at that fin coming up in the current. And that's how they fight hard. You can actually see the fin. If I just ease him in, cutting through the surface there, absolutely superb sport. And I just love seeing that float dig away like that, especially when I go barbel fishing, that is absolutely the only way to catch barbel is on the float. You can sit there, you can ledge, you can catch all the big ones you want, 
but I'd sooner catch a five pounder on the float any day. Which I wish this grading was five pounds. Oh, what a nice finish. Too short. Come on, come on. <coughs> Bordy, choking me. Get it, get it. It doesn't want I tell you what guys, look, nice fish, they're all nice big grayling, real nice big grayling. And of course, you only ever see fish like this, sport like this, if you watch this program called the Totally Awesome Grayling in the Year. Beautiful fish, what a cracker. By now, even though we had not been able to start till almost midday, we had piled our way through over 30 fish. The extra water in the river was bringing everything on the bite, and the constant winter flooding had got rid of much of the extra weed. Everything was into my feed of bread, bran and maggots. As usual, our basic mix of totally awesome ground bait was sending the fish wild. This was float fishing of the same high standard that I used to get 40 years ago. And Mike was cracking his way through his personal best lists like there was no tomorrow. He just wanted to catch a nice grayling. But he did that over and over and over again. And Best Brown and best days, and what a setting. No wind, no rain, low pressure, my favorite time for river fishing. guys we've had a good number of grading dace trout for me this has been totally awesome look at this beauty look at the, look at the fin on that unbelievable colors in that dorsal fin awesome what a fish great scrap on the match rods and a great initiation into the world of float fishing and river but the totally awesome crew were not finished yet there was still going to be another surprise PB. But whatever could it be? We've had absolutely cracking fishing, outstanding sport. 35, maybe 40 fish, dace, grayling, brown trout, rainbow trout, not much left now. But I've changed over just as a last tactic to show you the stick float here. It's not stick boat conditions, but there's one swim, I might get away with it. Up there's a deep bend. I have had some very big dace in there, as I've mentioned before. I like the dace down here. We're going to go down. We're going to have a last battle of the floats. It's the Avon Body Balsa versus the Stick Float. This guy's going to win. Let's go. Okay, guys, another classic Mr. Crabtree. Totally awesome type swim here. Another big bend. This time we're on the reverse side of it, but there's another big, big old branch or tree that's fallen down in the water. You can see the rubbish on it, and that's how high, when it was flooded, the river was. Another, what, three or four feet, because all the rubbish and raft and stuff is up there. Now on the inside, the outside of the bend's too fast to fish. I certainly can't stick float that. But I can probably try and bait up on the inside of this bend, do it slower, just on the inside of the bend, and I've got a feeling there might be fish there, and I have indeed had days here. Same old thing, start them on the ground bait first. Just on the inside there. It's all gonna trundle down and the grayling and the dace, and there's even roach up here. They've all, they've all got to feed on this eventually when it goes past. If I put it in the fast water, whoosh, it's gone. So you want to put it somewhere that it's got a bit of time to sink down deeper, especially for trotting. So we're going to heave some out there. Take no prisoners. A few maggots on top. Get them out there. Ah, plenty of maggots up there. 
And then we're both trying to float fish down there. Mike with the Avon, me with a stick float. I think I can get away with a stick float and I've got it dotted right down so I can barely see it. Let's fish, boys. Guys, I told you about that swim, that spot, my totally awesome spot. Now look at the ground bait and look at that massive dace, an absolutely chunky great dace. But what I'm so pleased with, he's just coughed up all that ground bait in there. Look, loads of it, bread and ground bait. He is stuffed and that has to be as big a dace as you could want to see in three hours fishing. So you know the saying guys, are we going home yet with fish like this? Mm, no. Soon, but not yet. Guys, got something on here. We've been, we changed to this new swim in the flat water over there. Had a few trots down, this is literally going to be our last trot. And I have a clonker. my new PP Roach, which for me, this is an absolute beast. Please get him in there. Please. Oh, what a roach. Got him? What a roach. Did you get him? Yeah, he's in the net. Oh man, that's a big Look roach. At that. Look at that roach. Yeah. All the ground bait is coughed up down there. Obviously works. Look at this. Beauty of a roach. River roach. You can't beat them. Look at that. Lovely orange fins there. That is. That's a chunk. That's, that's what, a chubby, that's, uh, chubby roach. That's a pound and a half, I say. Yeah. Anybody's money. Look at that. Look at the size of that. Still. Beauty. That's worth a still picture, I know. That's definitely a still. That is totally awesome. Let's get him back. Let's get the picture first. Thank you.